Good morning, friends. Today, I want to talk to you about the size of pressure tanks and is bigger always better? Let's get into it. So, if you're buying a house generally outside of the city, you're going to have something called a well, right? Now, that's going to be where you're drinking water and your normal shower water and all the other stuff that you need water on the house is going to come from is the well. Basically, the best way to visualize what's going on, underground, you're going to have a cup of water. That's what we refer to as the aquifer, right? And then your well is basically going to be the straw. That's how you get the water out of the cup. So when you have an aquifer, right, and, and you have your well, depending on the depth and depending on the type of aquifer, you're going to get a variation of yield, right? So the best way to kind of think about this, at least in our area, in the Piedmont Range, right? We've got a lot of rocks. We're in the mountains. Generally, how the water is going to work its way through is there's going to be all these fractures, right? One fracture might be a, a gallon. Another fracture might be two gallons. When you drill the well and you hit both of these fractures, you get together three gallons per minute. So you need to know what your yield is of your well. You also need to know what size pump and the discharge rate of that pump is there right from there once you know your yield once you know your discharge rate now you can calculate the size of your pressure tank generally uh, the pressure tank is going to be this big blue object in your basement right sometimes it's going to be fiberglass sometimes it'll be yellow sometimes it'll be a lighter blue sometimes it'll be a darker blue it just depends on who made the made the tank the goal of the pressure tank is to supply pressure to the home right so the top part is going to be air bottom part is going to be water and there's a bladder in between so what will happen is the pump that's in your well, which is going to be outside, again, your straw in the aquifer, there's going to be a pump in there that's going to shoot that water up and into the pressure tank. Now, standard pressure tanks in our area are usually about 33 gallons in capacity. That does not mean that you have 33 gallons of water in there, but it's the equivalent of uh, just a glass tank, right? As if you didn't have a bladder. So you'll have in the tank the air, bladder, water, and then what will happen is the water will be pushed in by the pump, which will then compress that air, and that compressed air will push the water the rest of the way. Now, an auxiliary function of a pressure tank is actually to give the pump enough runtime to cool down. What will burn up a well pump is going to be the on-off, right? So as the pump clicks on with the cycle, it'll, start, it'll have enough heat basically from the amperage to get that motor to turn. But you got to dissipate that heat somehow, right? So by the running the water through the system and around it, getting that water to move, it takes the heat away from the motor and it kind of extends the life of the system. Now, if you have what's called a short cycle, you're not allowing that pump enough runtime to cool itself down adequately. Most pumps are going to be fine if it short cycles a little bit, right? It's only really a big issue if you short cycle repeatedly over the course of a long time period, whether that be months or years. So why why would you choose a larger pressure tank over a smaller one well generally you'll see the bigger pressure tanks in our area on older homes with lower yielding wells and the reason why is they want to have a little bit of an additional storage capacity in the house because the well is lower yielding and it's shallower right most modern wells that are drilled in our area are going to be far deeper than their counterparts from about 30 or 40 years ago and the reason why is those codes have changed nowadays in our area you must be able to produce one gallon per minute within six hours and in the first two hours have produced 500 gallons of water so how do they hit that 500 gallon mark they just drill deeper and by drilling deeper that gives us more storage in the actual well which means you don't necessarily need as much of a storage tank in the house now, a larger pressure tank is good for the additional storage, but with the size comes additional cost, right? A 120 gallon well extrol uh, unit generally will range anywhere from $2,500 to three grand, just the, just the tank. That's not including the T assembly, the installation, any of the additional pipings, check valves, pressure switches, etc. None of that other stuff is included in that, in that cost range. Whereas a 30 gallon well extra tank, you know, usually you're between three and 600, depending on where you get it. And that's just for the tank. So it's significantly less for the smaller tank. So when you have these big tanks, it does give the pump more runtime, which is good. But it's really all that it's good for. It's just giving you more runtime and additional storage. 
let's just say you don't have a low yielding well. Let's say you have a normal, normal well, modern well, everything's drilled fine, the yield's good, discharge rate's good. You could probably get away with somewhere between 30 and 60 gallons instead of the 120. You might even be able to bump it up to 80 gallons if you want it. But again, it only really matters if you have a lower yielding well on an older home. Now, the issue is if you go too small, right, you might not be giving the pump enough time to run. A proper cycle length should be about 60 seconds. If you're under 60 seconds, technically you're in a short cycle, but we wouldn't really consider it being a problem until you start getting below 30 seconds. Once you start cycling in less than 30 seconds, that's, that's going to be putting a lot of additional wear and tear on the pump and can cause some issues down the road. So ideally you hit that 60 second threshold. If you're over 60 seconds, that's not that bad. Like it's fine. Everything will be okay. It just means that you oversize the tank and that it's, you're paying a little bit more for material that you don't really need, right? So if you have a smaller tank, how do you as a homeowner check it, right? Let's just say you're, you're buying this house, you move in, you didn't get it inspected, you don't know what my cycle length is. The easiest way to check it is to basically hook a hose up to the, the hose bib, or if you don't have time for that, have somebody turn on a sink, right? Maybe there's a bathroom sink or a utility sink. You turn that on and then you basically let the pressure drain until you, you hear the cycle kick on, right? The pressure switch will make an audible click sound. Once that click happens, next what you do is you turn off the power to, or turn off the water to the house and then you start your stopwatch, right? You want to try it. It's, it's usually easier if you have a hose at the hose bib because then you can just shut the, the valve off and go from there. But sometimes that's not a possibility, right? So if, if that's the case, what you're going to want to make sure that you're doing is you have the stopwatch start as soon as the cycle starts, and then you're basically going to sit there and you're going to listen and watch until the pressure switch eventually turns off. It'll make another audible click sound when that happens. So if you're going to be doing this, what you want to do is you want to see at least 30 seconds or more, right? So you, you basically hook your hose up to the bib, Get that hose outside or into a sump pump or whatever turn it on the pressure drops cycle length or some pressure switch engages the cycle starts stopwatch is engaged you watch it continue to go as the water discharges off you want to make sure that you're not running anything while you're doing this and then once this cutoff happens you stop the stopwatch and then now you can know what your your dish or your cycle length is if that's good then you're fine right if it's sub 20 seconds or if it's going very, very quick, like sub five seconds, the next steps go up to the straighter valve, which is going to be basically like what you see on a car tire. It's going to be up top. Press that, right? If air comes out, it's okay. But if water comes out, the mm, bladder's gone. Next thing you can attempt to do if you're trying to identify a leaking pre or a bad bladder in a pressure tank, we've already covered that in another video. So I'm going to go ahead and link that here. Check that out. That'll kind of help you out figuring how to check if you have a waterlogged tank and what does a waterlogged tank mean. So in summation, uh, generally bigger is not always better. You want to kind of straddle that real fine line of doing exactly what you want it to do, right? You want it to be a 60 second cycle. Generally, you'll see that be good for anywhere from 30 gallons to 60 gallons. The 20 gallon tanks almost always are too small. The 120 gallon tanks are almost always too big. Usually you'll see those as a three to five minute run time. Perfectly fine, but it's still, it's you're paying almost quadruple what you ought to have paid for, right? Then there's not really that much more benefit, in my opinion, on having the larger tank. I would say though, it is much better to have a bigger tank than it is to have a smaller tank. Having a short cycle can cause more issues than letting the pump run for longer. The other argument that could be made with a larger tank is that uh, because you have such a larger capacity, you're not using the pump as often. So that means you should be able to get a longer lifespan out of the pump. Eh, I don't know. I, I've seen pumps go bad in the same timeline with the larger size tanks versus the 30 gallon tanks. And I guess you could make the argument. I just haven't seen it really in, in reality work out that way. I hope that this was uh, some good information for you and hopefully maybe gave you a little bit more insight into the world of well and septic and maybe you're thinking about replacing your tank and you're just trying to decide do i go with the small size or do i go for the big size i would ask your your contractor or go to the charts and start looking it up yourself just see if you can size it correctly 
right? There's tons of different brands out there. Uh, cheaper is not always better. Uh, more expensive is also not always better too. So you got to be careful with what you purchase. Look up the reviews, see what the opinions of the people around you are, and go with what that is, right? If you enjoy this, please hit that like button, subscribe. I have more content posted daily on the world of well and septic. Till next time, guys.